bids for a semi-final spot for this World Cup. Um, so this is not a very difficult thing to do actually because there are only 10 countries that are participating in the Cricket World Cup. Unlike football where there are around 32 uh, nations or in rugby where there are more than 20 nations that are participating. And in cricket it's easier, it's becoming more and more easier because for the past 10-15 uh, years uh, the standard of cricket has declined declined very drastically although there are uh, there has been a growth in terms of t20 and t10 cricket there is the more viewership there there's more money flowing um, but the, the standards the overall standards be it fast bowling be it uh, spin bowling or be it uh, quality batsmanship uh, that has uh, declined. Plus, what we are saying is the countries that used to be a force, uh, say in the 90s or early 2000s, uh, they have significantly fallen now for a variety of reasons. For example, Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka were never a great side until uh, the mid 90s, and finally, when they won the World Cup in 96, it was a little bit of a surprise. Not a great surprise, but a little bit of a surprise because. They never came as a you know contenders. They came as a team, as a dark horse, and a team that could shock many. But they went on to win the title. Now that was an aberration. After that, or even before that, uh, of course, in '83 India did win. It was sort of a shock. But we haven't seen um, a outside country, outlier, uh, to come out all the way and win the tournament. Plus, the Sri Lanka. Uh, we have seen a significant decline in the quality of cricket in Sri Lanka. Uh, we are not seeing the same Sangakara, Javardana, Muridharan, Dilshan type of players now. There are a lot of players coming and going. So uh, that's a problem. The other thing is South Africa. Now South Africa used to be one of the greatest sites uh, uh, ever because it's been there for more than 100 years. Uh, they have a great tradition of cricket. They were out of cricket for apartheid and other reasons for 20 years. They made a comeback and in the 90s and early 2000s of the 90s under Anchi Cronier and in 2000s under Graham Smith um, and to a certain degree after Abe de Villiers took over, they were a very exciting team and they were the world beaters. Uh, but today, despite it looks like a pretty barren side, but I think they are not the same thing. You know, you, hold, you cannot hold them with the same pedigree that uh, South Africa used to be in the 90s or early 2000s. You know, in 2003 World Cup, they should have actually won it. But because of the selection policy and the quota policy and other politics involved, there's so much that uh, South Africa team uh, has to take uh, before actually coming down to the field. I think the, 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 they actually lose the game before they actually arrive to the field itself. A set of foot uh, to the ground itself. The question, they, they, it's been um, minimized to just 10 teams. We don't see teams like West Indies getting a chance or Zimbabwe. I felt that Zimbabwe has improved a lot in the last few years. It's a very exciting team as well. So we don't see Zimbabwe. We used to shock a lot of teams, upset a lot of teams in the 90s. That's what we saw beating India in 99, beating South Africa in 99. Uh, we don't see them. Ireland. They said they said they've been doing well in patches, but they didn't make it. So ultimately, we are left with 10 teams. Now in 10 teams, it's very, uh, I think it's fair to say that Netherlands and Afghanistan, um, absolutely no chance. Um, it doesn't look that way. I will talk about Netherlands and Afghanistan in, in when I do a separate analysis of these teams. Pakistan, India, Australia, England are a certainty. The fourth spot is a question mark and it could be between South Africa, Pakistan and New Zealand because New Zealand have done, uh, always done well in ICC uh, tournaments and it's a very organized team with playing percentage cricket and a very unassuming team as well. So that's because of the discipline, they, they are actually ahead of others and they have done well in the last uh, T20 World Cups and in the last uh, few other World Cups, they have been finalists. They have been, they have been finalists in 2015 and 2019 finals of the 2021 T20 World Cup, so they have been very consistent. And the coming back of Ken Williamson, they look solid. The team combination, India definitely looks red hot. Uh, with the, the middle order is settled, the bowling looks very good. Teams that have solid bowling attack, good, 
forceful bowling attack, wicket taking bowling attacks uh, with out and out fast bowlers, high quality wrist spinners, they're going to do really well. Uh, so India is a definite contender. Uh, England, because of the kind of cricket they play, you know, they don't have this uh, same uh, bowling attack as say maybe New Zealand has or maybe South Africa has or maybe India has. Uh, but they are a definite contender in my opinion because of the kind of cricket they are playing and plus they have been there and done that. In 2019, in the, uh, in the business end of the tournament, they started to falter but then they will be able to make a comeback. And with Ben Stokes there, he's somebody who likes these challenges. He was somebody who's actually standing up and rising to the occasion. Um, and they have these players like Sam Curran, Livingston. They somehow, I feel that if they're lucky and if they get to chase, even if they're chasing 400 total, they will be able to win. And that's why, and, and, and even if they win only six games, because to make it in semifinals, you don't have to win all the games. You can just win six games with a higher run rate, higher margins, and you can make it. And because England's strike rate is very high, the run rate would be very high. That's what I feel. They have a good opportunity to actually making it to the semifinals. My third team, in my opinion, would be Pakistan. Now, this is very controversial to say because uh, for Indians, uh, they don't want Pakistan to actually come. If you ask any Indian cricketers personally, or even the BCCI, they wouldn't want Pakistan to actually make it to the semis or to the knockout stages because that's where Pakistan becomes dangerous. They become dangerous that, because it's been historically so and they're very mercurial players. They always blow hot, blow cold. So Pakistan might actually, they might be uh, limping uh, in the uh, tournament uh, with the thin margin, they would be able to make it knockout stages and then it becomes very dangerous because uh, come at the heart, come at the moment, they will rise. And if they happen to meet India in the semis, or maybe India in the semis, in the final, that is going to be, I mean, that's going to be bigger than the Football World Cup that we just witnessed recently. So that's that's so much pressure, so much pressure. I think um, I will have to talk about India-Pakistan separately, in a separate segment. But that's why I feel that Pakistan, despite not having a side they really wanted to have because after the debacle of the Asia Cup, they've lost faith in many players, they've dropped many, um, the injuries. Nathim Shah not being there is a huge, huge minus point for them. Uh, plus, at the replacement of Hassan Ali doesn't look that great. They, Hassan Ali is an average bowler to me. He's, he's not, he's not a, a world-class bowler any means. He might have done well in patches. He's almost a supporting bowler. The problem would be that Shain Shafridi and Alice Rock, you know, how are they able to maintain that uh, fitness throughout the tournament? Because they have to ball 90 overs, I mean, to, uh, I mean uh, throughout nine, uh, nine matches. If they have to rest one of them, uh, it's going to be very difficult because they don't, they don't have a backup Simo. So that is going to be a challenge for Barbara. But I think the batting might actually come good because now what I'm thinking, seeing is that they're trying to bring Saul Shaquille at number four. So that might look a little bit, that might give them a lot of weightage to their batting order, middle order, which is a little shaky. So they might do well with the batting. The bowling, it depends on how Sharab bowls. Because if Sharab fails in this tournament, I'm telling you, Pakistan will be knocked out uh, very early in the tournament. Uh, but again, when they're pushed to the corner, they're pushed to the corner now, and they're coming to India to pull a point, and uh, they also seen that the, the it's been sold out crowd for the Pakistan matches. So I'm thinking that there might be a, it might be a silver lining for them, and we might see a surprise. Okay, now number my fourth team, in my opinion, would be a dark horse of this tournament, and I'm telling you, that one nobody would predict it, but I am giving them a chance this time. I really want them to do well, and that is Bangladesh. Why I'm telling you is that if you've been seeing Bangladesh cricket, I really don't follow it but i was really somewhat i was reading some articles and and i have few bengali friends and they were saying that for the last many years last, last six seven years they are actually pretty consistent in one day cricket they might have done well they might have done well in t20 cricket or test cricket one day cricket they have experienced players someone like saki mushfikur or mamadullah and all these guys have been playing for decades man they've been playing since 2007 so 
so you have to actually hold them give them credit and hold them with high pedigree and because they like this 50 hour format they look very well organized and because they also are they actually do well in subcontinent and this kind of condition actually suits them very well plus they have quality spinners now people might say the spinners may really may not come good as much as fast pullers would be and they don't have a wrist spinner but their spinners are real good spinners they're not like ordinary spinners they're really seasoned spinners they love they've been bowling in this uh, cracks for day and day out and if some cracks especially when they're bowling in the daytime that might give them a lot of purchase and if they've been given opportunity to chase you know 300 320 350 they are a serious serious contenders uh, and because many teams don't play for example australia don't, don't like playing with bangladesh uh, and they don't seem to travel as much as other teams do so people don't know much about bangladesh so they might actually set the uh, state on fire i would be really really happy to see them in the semis so these are my four semis final spots